What's happening everybody? This is Captain RL. Today, I'm just going to share with you guys how to keep a small fiddler farm. Small as in 500 to 2,000 crabs, depending on the size of your farm. This time of year, everybody likes the sheep set fish because you can catch the big females. They tend to bite more. And uh, They move to the offshore reef next month. It's uh, almost the end of February now, just passing the full moon. So between the February moon and the March moon, big sheep set. So Having fiddler crabs is of, of utmost importance to the people who want to catch sheep's head. Yeah, you can use clams, and you can use sea urchins, all that stuff. But crabs is the easiest way to go. You just got to be able to find them, and you got to be able to keep them. And uh, it's not hard to make them happy. You just really got to put forth the effort and um, give them what they want. So right now I'm going to show you what we have. And I have four of these. There's around 1,500 in each cooler okay so what I've got just right off the bat I'll let you know the coolers are the 150 Coleman's you can get the 120's too they're only 50 or 60 bucks at Walmart or Sam's um, and you can get them online for free delivery if you order too because it goes over that hundred dollar mark or, or whatever it gets to free shipping and uh, they're enormous coolers they're cheap uh, they're, they're perfect for this will they keep drinks for five days no but for a fiddler farm, they're perfect for that with the lid. So check out what I got. I'm going to show you right now. Okay, guys, here's my fiddler farm. This is one of four, like I said, that, that I have. Okay, all this is, like I said, is a cheap Coleman cooler. This one is a 150. And I think they even consider it a marine cooler. I can't remember on this one because I don't buy the same ones every time. When they're under 70 bucks, I won't mess with them. But I get 120s or 150s, uh, whichever one is the cheapest. And sometimes the 150s are cheaper than the 120s. So you get the biggest one you can get. Okay, so what we got here, what the detriment to crabs, to fiddlers, is the direct exposure to cold weather under about 55, 60 degrees. Really, 60 is uh, it's getting there at that point. You get them down into the 50s, the, the direct exposure with no cover, which is why this towel's here, the direct air exposure to them, it'll kill them. Well, how do they survive it? Out on the flats, right? That's that's where the sand comes in. Carpenter sand works great for this, dollar, two, three bucks a bag, whatever it is. And uh, we put about six to seven inches depth of sand in there. And yes, you have to flush that once a week. Take your crabs out and clean them, etc. I'm gonna slide this back. Well, first I'll show you my lighting. I've got several things here inside this double lamp. It's a reptile lamp, is all this is. Got it hanging on a tripod with all this other lighting. But what these two lamps are, one is just a, a regular light bulb, 150 watts. That's what one is. That's just to give them light. Okay, the one on this side, which is not on, is a uh, is a red heat light bulb. It's what it is. Um, that's what we use in this thing here. So sometimes this is a personal preference. I just like to give them some light. This is an LED. It's not generating any heat at all. It does give them some light though, and they like that. So keeping them happy is what you want. They like to hide and stuff. You got to have a little bit of a water source without contaminating your sand with that water source because it's going to get crap in it that you don't want back in the sand when they walk through it. So you want to keep your water source where you can keep that renewed. So how you do that, right? All right, this is a two by six laying over the cooler with a towel under it. And obviously that keeps the towel from falling into the cooler, the weight of this uh, two by six. I'm going to slide it back. Okay, as you can see, there's a water source right here. And uh, usually there's two in here, but I'm building the other farm. We needed the other one. But a couple of these, you get them at the aquarium stores. They go in aquariums for fish, whatever. And at the bottom of the amphibians, whatever. These little bowls, they sit right in the sand, kind of wall them down. They can climb in and out of that when they need water. And all other times, and keep in mind, there's around a thousand fiddlers in here that have been in here for in this particular cooler. They've been in here for, uh, 
I guess I guess about seven days now. They're very healthy. You see, on this end, we got one of those little, I don't know what you would call it, a mountain cave. They can hide under that in it. They can crawl up it. When I pull this off in the mornings, they're all they're all over this thing. So just here's a styrofoam block for them to crawl on. I like to put some cups in there. They like to hide and stuff. And the reason that you want that dirt so deep is even with the heat lamp on, which is the one on that side I showed you that's not on right now, even with that on, you're only going to get this depending on the temperature outside. You don't want this indoors because they smell. But even with that, you still want them to give them the depth that they're used to. Um, or somewhat, you ain't ever going to get that. But you want to give them some kind of environment to get down into when they're cold. The cold is what will kill these crabs. Period. Nothing else probably, unless you dump bleach in there, ain't going to kill them. But them being cold is what will be their device. So keeping them warm is most important. You can feed them grits and not much. Just a, a few sprinkles every day or two. And uh, you'll notice it go missing if you put it in the right places where they can't crawl all over it. Um, you'll notice the grits go missing. Just regular old grits. And um, that dirt, you need two bags of uh, carpenter sand. And then what we do is when we, when we pour the carpenter sand in here and spread it out by hand, we, we moisten that sand with uh, water from the river. You know, it's about 10 to 15 uh, salinity per thousand which is just regular old brackish water. And we moisten the sand with that. And then about every five or six days or so, whatever a week, we'll come back and re-moisten that sand with some more, which we keep we keep it on hand. That's brackish water right there. So we can scoop it out as we need to and, uh, and keep it in here. That's also what's in that dish. You don't want fresh water on the crabs. Um, Anything you do with them needs to be brackish. But the sand dries out because of the heat lamp when you do use it in the winter time. So if it's over 70 every day, you don't need any kind of lights at all to keep them warm. You just need the dirt where they can be, where they want to be at nighttime. But with the dirt drying out from the heat lamp, like I said, you have to, you have to re-moisten that sand every now and then. You just kind of judge that as you learn the, learn the tricks on how to keep them alive. But I've, I've got a couple of guys, one main guy here locally that I buy from, and um, I try to buy a thousand to two, maybe even three thousand at a time to keep for these farms going. And uh, that way, I don't want to sell mine. They're, well, I, they're not for sale. But when we want to go, we can go offshore or inshore. Those big fish are here right now. So anyhow, that's kind of the basics of of how to get a farm started. So this this uh, double bowl fixture. For iguanas, whatever this is for, you know, you can get that at the pet store. And like I said, I just got to hang on a tripod in case there's problems because you will lose these crabs if they get cold. So if there's a problem with that, I've got regular shot white fixtures sitting here that'll handle the wattage bulbs that are in there. A couple different bulbs you can use. You can use the red chicken bulbs that they use to keep chicks alive uh, when they're born. The red bulbs seem to be the best, although I do have white ones in case one of those goes out. These crabs get cold they're dead otherwise this is kind of like a little hobby and uh it's it's pretty easy to do you just take you it'll take you a week or two you'll lose a bunch of crabs but uh, you'll get the hang of it and i've got also i've got a couple of just granite rocks down there they like stuff to crawl on they like stuff to get under and they like to dig holes because that's what they do for like their, their life for a living they dig holes into the dirt they like to hide so they're all piled up in that corner like i said because they're worried about me but um, yeah, believe it or not, in here, there's, there's probably a thousand fiddlers. You won't believe if I turn that sand up, because it's, it's, it's six, eight inches deep. It takes two bags of that, like I said. If I turn that upside down right now with my hand, their fiddlers will come out from everywhere, inside that sand and beneath it. Because it's high up, it's cooler. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. And, um... We just did a sheep's head video where we use some of these actually. You can watch that as well if you'd like on uh, so, uh, Southern Saltwater's channel. But anyhow, if you have any questions, let me know. Hope this helps some of y'all in, uh, in keeping some fiddlers. Uh, but I would suggest, I don't care if you've only got 100 crabs, get, get the biggest container you can get because 
uh, they're, they're, they're way overpopulated, overpopulated even at a thousand in this big cooler they're way overpopulated so we have to make them as happy as we can and, and call the dead ones out you know as we go along key takeaways from that video obviously number one the crabs cannot get cold or they will die I've seen a lot of the, a lot of people do well a few people do the fiddler farm videos and some of those are, are actually pretty good but one thing I don't agree with is mixing the water because we've tried it and this is why I disagree with it is mixing the water into the same container that your sand is in I mean standing water you don't want that because that ends up being a cesspool in a couple of days we tried that lost a bunch of crabs so that was out when we tried that to begin with so the crabs got to have besides okay the cold to kill them and then they also got to have a water source that you can change out every day or two that they can come in and out of otherwise they'll dry and burn up you know because of the heat lamp when you have to use it okay so that's the second thing is a water supply that's removable and replaceable with river water you pour spring water in there probably a bad idea we hadn't done that to see if it'll kill them because i believe it will third thing sand two bags of that whatever it is sounds it's playground sand i think construction sand doesn't matter it's cheap a couple bucks so we stack up several of course so we can redo the sand when it when it gets real bad but again you can filter the sand you just got to get your crabs out and clean them um, we're going with about every seven to ten days cleaning the crabs it depends on the death toll that we have going on inside the inside the farm if uh if a lot of them are dying if we're going to we need to clean them out and, and filter that sand sooner and re-clean out the entire environment clean the crabs up by putting them in a bucket of clean river water one at a time however you have to do it the cups are handy for that because a lot of them will be in the cups so you can pick the cups up and just start dumping them in there's a there's a couple hundred of them pretty much right away that you, you've got dumped into a, your, your your clean water source which is a separate brackish water bucket and um, you don't want the temperature change to be too much so sometimes we even heat that water up before we dump them in there to clean them so at that time we'll either flush the sand out or spend the four dollars to change it three dollars whatever it is and change the sand out and we again remember moisten that sand with brackish river water as well knead it knead it together and flatten it back out and put all clean off all your rocks anything you got in there put it all back uh, it takes a whole what does it take just 30 minutes that's 30 35 minutes when you get good at it and uh then you can have a filter farm going at all times and you just got it in your brain like it's like wow this is such a pain in the ass but in reality though if you, if you kind of just consider it just a hobby get, get into the routine of it you're going to always have crabs all year and only time you have to worry about this stuff is from december to march is the only time you have to worry about the heat lamps and all that jargon there because uh, otherwise you're, you're you're good to go most of the rest of the of the year but that direct the most important thing is contamination from dead crabs but the biggest thing is again is cold weather direct exposure again you saw that towel there that's just a barrier to keep the, the direct air exposure off of those crabs and um, we also found that the heat lamp heats up the insulation around the cooler and through the bottom so meaning that we found that the crabs dig all the way down almost to the bottom or into the bottom of the cooler right flush level with the bottom of the cooler because it's very warm there because the insulation throughout the cooler has been warmed warmer than the sand itself by the heat lamp so they dig down and that, that's good that's good because we thought we'd lost them all a few nights ago the heat lamp didn't come on and uh, there was about six crabs that looked alive when we got in there and Josh turned that sand over they were in there by the hundreds down in that sand and we noticed that the sand was super warm right at the base of the cooler and then we felt the bottom of the cooler and sure enough it was warm so the insulations in that cooler is toting that toting that heat which is all good stuff so it's really pretty easy since uh since I've explained it like this you should understand that it, it's pretty simple really you just gotta you just gotta take care of them and uh, take the take the few minutes a day to check them out peel out the dead ones you do see and change out that water and all you do there is just keep a couple five gallon buckets of, of river water sitting around nothing's going to happen to that it ain't going to get unsalty it's, it's going to be fine to do it that way so 
If you have any questions, again, like I said, just leave a comment below and uh, we'll answer questions for you. Appreciate y'all watching.